yeah, so we're going to cover this machine, how to use this uh, Roland uh, Monofab SRM20 machine in order to uh, to mill circuit boards. Um, so things like these. We'll also show in camera here. Um, I think, um, yeah, so as you see, this is a three axis machine um, in a similar way as the laser cutter or, or, the, or the vinyl cutter. So it has a moving head, so which moves along the X axis. Um, and then there's a moving bed, which is moving along the Y axis. And, and then there's the spindle, which is basically a motor uh, with some, uh, with, with the set screw uh, and a place uh, where you can insert the collet. Um, and in the collet, you can install it, then the tool. Uh, so which moves in that direction. So the exact specifications in terms of what is the range of movement you can check in the in the data sheet of the machine, but it's approximately 15 centimeters by 10 centimeters by five, maybe maybe even 10. Um, and then here's a set of tools that we use for for PCB milling. So there are three three different milling tools. Uh, so we have to relabel them. So one is 0.8 millimeter tool, uh, so which you can use for cutting and drilling holes. Uh, and then we have uh, 0.3, which we can which we can use for extra small parts. So if there is a really small part which has a uh, uh, well, the separation between the the distance between leads is is very small, like 0.3 millimeters or or even less, then we can use this one. And this is 0.4, uh, so it's not labeled, but uh, it is there. So these tools are fragile, uh, so you should be careful with them. But if they break, then we have some backups in this bag over here. Um, so if you see that we are running out, just let us know because, like, we need to you know, restock them. Uh, I just ordered also a, a set of new tools. Um, and basically, the way how you use a tool is that you open it up. So how you install the tool. Um, and you insert the tool into this collet over here. I'm gonna show it in a greater detail later, but just for the sense of it. Uh, and you also need the, the, this, this key, Allen key, in order to set it in place. Uh, so you slide it in here, and then you use this in order to Adjust the set screw. You have to tighten the set screw, and now it's there. So I will leave it like this for now, um, because once we will start milling, we'll need to uh, set the origin in a similar way as, as with the laser cutter, and also with the vinyl, cut, vinyl cutter. Not just X Y, but also Z origin. And it's already on. Uh, so on a computer, you will find the software called VPanel, and uh, this software lets you control the machine. So here on the left side, you can see the, the X, the current X coordinate, the Y coordinate, and the Z coordinate. Then um, when you will actually start working with it, when you will be cutting, then here you will be able to see the spindle speed. Um, no, the speed, the movement speed. So kind of the feed rate. Uh, and then here below, you will see the spindle speed uh, in terms of uh, revolutions per minute. And you can also turn it on and off just like that. So you, you don't have any speed controls except this spindle speed slider over here that goes from low to high. Usually you want uh, it to be high for best cutting performance. There might be situations where you need to be lower. Uh, and then here there are arrow keys which allow you to move the, uh, the spindle or the uh, the tool head in different directions, so X and Y, and then Z axis. Uh, in order to continuously move, you need to select the continue setting. So when you press and hold, it's going to move continuously, also including, including the Z. But with Z, be careful. So uh, you need to make sure that you do not get too close to the actual material or the surface of the um, 
the, the working area uh, to, to not break the tool. So whenever you are getting closer to uh, some limits where you have the potentiality of uh, breaking the tool, uh, change these settings. So the cursor step. So this 100 uh, times 100 setting means that it's going to move one millimeter at a time. So basically one step uh, of, uh, of, the, of the machine equals uh, one hundredth of a millimeter. Uh, so you can go as low as one hundredth of a millimeter. So you can, so when you see, when you, when you click this, you'll see, for example, here on the X axis, the value changes by one hundredth of a millimeter. And then when you change to X10, you will see that it's the value changes in tenths of millimeter. And then when you set to times 100, the value is going to change by one millimeter. Uh, in order to set the origin, uh, you will need to use these um, buttons over here. So the on the on the on the right side, so the X slash Y and Z buttons. So for X Y, uh, yeah, to set X Y origin. There's only one button, and then for the Z, there's a separate button. So you cannot set X and Y separately. Uh, yeah, also, like a good, good reminder. So take pictures and uh, even though I am recording, take pictures and try to take some notes so you can actually make the group, group documentation um, of it. Um, so there are some videos already on, on, on the Alpha Fab Lab YouTube channel, uh, which you can use to kind of roll back. So and also take screenshots from there. So that's that's fine. Um, but I think the most important part is that you take uh, photos of, of the actual process that's going to happen here. But um, yeah, the more documentation you have, the more flexibility after you will have. Uh, yes. Yes. So um, to continue. So here also like the, the only setting is a user coordinate system. So that's. That's the only setting, so you're not going to be. Uh, it's not. There are not so many opportunities for you to get lost. And um, yeah, as for the assignment, so for the group assignment, when you go to Fab Academy website and then you navigate to 2021. And go to schedule and then electronics production uh, let's scroll down where this assignment is so it's a bit confusing um, so one thing that you need to remember for the group assignment is that you need to use this so these two links over here which link to do different files so the trace is an interior so basically, this is the test file that we're going to mill now in order to characterize the machine a little bit. And then we're going to change the tool and use this file in order to cut it out uh, in specific dimensions. Uh, so let's save these somewhere on the disk. I'll make a new folder. Test. And I'm also going to save the other file here. Uh, I'm going to close these. So the white place is in a cut? Yeah. Um, I will explain a little bit uh, in a minute. So in order to generate toolpaths for the machine, there are several options. But the recommended option for the Fab Academy is to use the mods tool, which is um, which you can find on the Center for Bits and Atoms uh, at the MIT website. So it has a, has a has its own domain name, mods.cba.mit.edu. Hit enter, and basically the browser window becomes the software uh, for many things. Uh, so for loading programs, so for uh, you to do many different things in the browser. So when you right click. You can load a program. Uh, you want to choose the open server program because there, there, there are some 
uh, already preset, pre-written programs for you on the server. You don't have anything uh, stored locally at the point. And you have to find the the Roland Mill SRM20 PCB PNG. So, which is going to allow us to use a PNG image um, as an input to generate two paths for PCB milling for SRM20 machine. So, you open that, you'll see this network of nodes. Uh, so this is why mods is called mods, it's like modules. It initially was called fab modules, and then from fab mo modules it became mods. Um, so the intention of this software is to allow you to follow each individual step um, uh, in each individual step in the process of uh, generating the toolpaths for the machine. So the toolpaths are basically vectors, uh, and you need to somehow uh, figure out how to use an image in order to produce these vectors. So we start out with selecting a PNG file in our drive. We select the line test PNG. It's going to upload it. And the concept is the following, that the white areas are the ones that we want to leave. So. So if you take a look at this um, material sheet, so this is um, a circuit board material. So where you see there is a or, or a copper copper covered clad. So that's that's kind of the industrial name of it. Um, so which is basically a sheet of um, a layer of copper on top of a material which is called FR1. FR stands for fire retardant. So uh, the FR1 is the least toxic, but also the least fire retardant. So basically, when we mill it, then there's going to be dust. Um, and if it happens that the dust particles get outside the machine, then it's not that bad. But for example, if we would be milling FR4, which is more like the industrial grade, copper covered clad, then that consists of, um, that is made out of, um, a glass fiber and when you mill that you get really tiny particles of glass fiber and you definitely do not want to breathe that because it stays in your lungs and can cause all kinds of bad things so this uh, I have I've, I've heard that people compare it to paper so it's basically uh, very close to paper and um, it, nothing bad is gonna happen if you you, you shouldn't breathe this, you know, like, <laughs> you know, like open up and, and then uh, try to smell it. And uh, so this is the same reason why, why the laser cutter has the fume exhaustion so that you should wait a little bit so the fumes go away. So always try to um, get rid of the dust and not make a, a cloud of it. So the concept is that the white areas is where we want the copper to stay. And the black areas, uh, we want to remove uh, the copper as much as possible. Uh, here, the next node, uh, where the image is connected, um, it's it's a presets node. So since we want to mill traces, uh, so we need to consider that these, these are kind of traces. So this is more like a test file, but we consider that these are actual PCB traces at the, at the point. So we need to select the mill traces preset. And uh, 164... Uh, uh, parameter in the parenthesis means that it's um, that it's for one sixty fourth um, of an inch. Uh, it's meant for a one sixty fourth of an inch tool, uh, which roughly equals zero uh, point four millimeters. Uh, and that you can see also here. So here in the next node, which is more. Uh, specifying the the basic milling parameters uh, for the toolpath. So what's what kind of toolpath we're going to have, and, uh, and and also it's specifying the tool. So for the tool diameter, you see that the pre the preset value is 0.39 something millimeters. Uh, and since we are using a 0.4 tool, we can just change this to 0.4 0.4 millimeters. So you can enter values in both in inches and millimeters. But in Europe, we we use millimeters. That's why we want millimeters. And the thickness of the of the copper clad, um, no, of the copper layer on the on the on the copper clad, it's about 0.1 millimeters. But 
you saw the the actual values yesterday during the lecture. I think it was 36 micrometers or something. So, but we assume um, like roughly that is 0.1. So in order to be precise, we're gonna set it to 0.1. So this, that's the cut depth. So basically, that's uh, so if we set the z0 on top of the surface on top of the the copper, then um, the tool path is gonna so the tool is gonna cut into the material um, like one tenth of a millimeter or 0.1 millimeter, and then it's gonna move around uh, to cut the uh, to cut the uh, material that doesn't have to be there. And then the maximum depth is um, so we're gonna set it to the same, uh, but let's say that you want to use the tool in order to cut uh, thicker material. You never do it in you very rarely do it in one pass. You, you, uh, so in, in, in the case of laser cutter, it, it just cuts through. So you have to specify the values so that you can cut the material uh, by going over the line once. But in CNC milling, you will notice that in order to cut something thicker out, you need to go multiple passes. And then basically the first parameter, the cut depth that we specify here, this is how deep we go in one single pass. And then the max depth is going to be the, the total depth of the material. And then the algorithm is going to calculate how many passes we need to go in order to actually reach the end. Um, this is the bottom part of the material. So then... What will happen if you, uh, in the beginning, give the cut depth, like, really big to go into the, the depth you need directly? Oh, then, then it's uh, the following. So depending on the tool, so... But it's going to go all the depth. So imagine that the tool is going to be spinning. It's going to go really deep into the material yeah. and then try to move and it's eventually stuck. break the tool. Uh, okay. So we don't want to break the tool because tools are expensive and uh, they t it takes time well, for them to arrive. So we should be careful about these parameters. Okay. Um, and then the offset number is that uh, so the algorithm is going to try to you know, leave some offset. So 0.4 millimeters around these white areas, it's probably not going to be enough. Um, so especially if we want to solder components and uh, we want to uh, avoid uh, failing situations. So this number of offsets uh, means that how many times around the area that we want to leave um, so the tool should travel. So four means that it's going to make four loops around every uh, island of copper. So if we have a little bit more space around that island so that we can do so, uh, do the soldering with, with a bit shaky hands. Uh, and then the offset step over is going to define so how much the tool should travel in between these steps, offset steps. So 0.5... Um, means 50%, basically, so 50% of the uh, tool diameter. So if the tool is 0 0.4, it's going to be 0 0.2. If the tool is uh, 0 0.8, it's going to be 0 0.4, and so on. And then the direction, so that's the spinning direction uh, of the tool. So if you select climb, then... Um, so I'm not going to really cover in detail at this time, but if you select climb, then the tool is kind of climbing um, along the edge that you want to cut. Uh, and if you select conventional, then it's cutting the edge that you want to cut uh, so that it's kind of carving into it. Uh, and the way uh, that you... So the climb is, is the default because it provides you with the most precise and clean cut. Uh, you, you might use conventional in some situations, but you then you really kind of uh, need to figure out or you need a reason to do it, really. So path merge. Then uh, before we hit calculate, uh, it makes sense to go here. So you see that the last node in this network is the web so uh, WebSocket device. But uh, because of the fact that we are not going to control the machine uh, by using WebSockets, uh, we're going to use the uh, official Roland software. So we're going to delete this node and replace it with... Be careful. Uh, replace it with a module on on the server. You can find it under the file category, and it's called save. And then we click on this 
file outputs of the Roland SRM20 milling machine module and click on the input of the save file module. Here we can specify the speed um, and you can see on the left side from the machine so there's a little sticker of uh, recommended values so for for each tool size so these these tools are brittle and uh, so for 0.4 tool it's safe to use 1.5 millimeters per second so that's going to be the speed um, how the tool is going to move so um, so 1.5 millimeters per second uh, yeah just think about that and then yeah, you'll see it also in action but it's that is very important so if it moves too fast that means that the tool might be too much under pressure and it might break so set these speeds uh, so be careful about these speeds then origin um so we're gonna set the origin at zero 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 uh so that's why where we want to start milling um so this uh, it's better that this matches the actual physical origin and we want that to match and in jog height it's going to be the height in millimeters uh, which are going to be used for rapid news moves so for example when one path ends and the milling machine has to jump over to the next path for cutting then it's gonna retract to that height and then travel to the beginning of the next line and for home position i'm gonna set x y to zero and then Z to two, so that's going to be this starting position, starting and ending position. So before cutting, uh, the the tool is going to be moved to this location, to this position, and then uh, once cutting ends, it's going to retract to to the Z height and move travel back to the home position. Uh, and at this point, we can go back to the Mill Raster Two D uh, module and click Calculate. So if you hit View. We will see the toolpath, how it looks like. So all these black lines, they are vectors, which are, which are defining where the tool is going to travel. And you have to imagine that the tool, so since it's cylindrical, it's gonna, so its center, it's gonna sit on on top of the line. So like this. Right, there's a cutting curve again. Sorry? Like a curve in the laser cutter. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, so the diameter is more like the curve. So in, in this case, we, we know the curve because, you know, it's it's on the tools. It's 0.4 millimeters. And then this is also what the algorithm in mods is, um, is taking into account in order to oh. calculate the offsets. Oh, okay. So you see the, the distance. So if you imagine the tool as a round shape like it's a circle traveling around here so that's uh so that's not visualized here and then the the red lines these are the rapid mu moves so they are so it's finish finishing this circle then moving up moving mm -hmm. quickly to the to this other location milling and so on uh then so would after Clicking this calculate button, so once it's finished, it also makes your browser to download the, the file. Uh, so you can uh, show it in folder and cut it and move it to a place where where it's good for you. So it's on this computer, it's better to store the file somewhere on your flash drive. Yeah. So because like after every, every restart, it's going to um, clean everything so delete every all the files yeah so we have now the line test um, and another thing that we need to do is to so after we mill this we want to also to cut it out uh, and for that we can use the other file which is the line test interior and here you can see that there is a sort of a white rectangle uh, with black border around it and um, the concept is the same so that the white area is the area that we want to leave in terms of copper and uh, where the black is uh, so we want to cut so we want to cut around the white rectangle 
And for that, we can use the mill outline preset. And here in the mill raster 2D, we're going to offset it a little bit. Uh, since we know that we are going to use 0.8 millimeter tool, so just one uh, 32, it's like one thirty-two of inch. Um, so which is roughly 0.8 millimeters. And then for the cut depth, I'm going to specify something that is close to the diameter of the tool. So that's like a rule of thumb also for general CNC milling, that it should be 50 uh, to maybe 75% of the um, of the diameter of the tool. So you're going to set it to 0.6. You see if the tool diameter is 0.8, so the cut depth should be always less than that. Um, in some cases it can, it can be the same, but uh, it's not recommended to go uh, to make the cut depth uh, larger or like bigger than than a tool diameter. So 0.6 is a good value. And then the max depth, um, so we know that they, the thickness of the board um, so is um, 1.6, um, maybe sometimes 1.7 millimeters. Uh, so just to be safe, we're going to overshoot a little bit and we're going to specify the, the maximum depth of the cut as 1.8 millimeters. So it's going to cut through and also cut a little bit into the, into the sacrificial layer. And offset number here, we set it to one because we actually just want to cut it out. So we, we just need one, one cut. And, and that's it. And, um, in the milling machine module, we'll specify the speed to two. So also, again, I remind, so here on the left side, there are the recommended speeds. Uh, of course, you're welcome to experiment, but, uh, be careful. Um, and for the origin, we can leave the same. And for the jog height and also the home, we can leave the same as for the trace milling. And then here in the mill raster 2D module, we hit calculate. And uh, here we even got a 3D preview. So you see there are three blue, blue lines, which are basically the same. So if you wouldn't have this perspective view, you would you would see them overlap, but you see that it's gonna do three passes. It's gonna start with a top pass, then uh, somewhere here there has to be also a, a connecting line. So it's gonna move uh, from layer to layer. So it's gonna cut the first layer, then move down, get the second layer, and move down again, and the third layer. So it's gonna cut the the shape out in 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 three in three moves in three passes, so to say. And again, uh, so we can show the file in the folder. We cut it, move it to the test folder of ours, paste it like that. Uh, so we have this now. And I'm going to open the, ah, so we have this open. Already, so, I'm gonna move it to the... so here on the left side we see the controls and then on the right side we can actually see how the machine moves. I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna open the lid and move the bed of the machine a bit closer in order to install the copper covered clad. So these clads you can um, you can find here, so in the electronics uh, rack. Uh, make sure that you so for the for the simple boards you select the, the one that is covered from one side. So you have so the double sided ones, but uh, for simple boards uh, we don't, don't want to use that um, because it's a bit of an overkill. Those are quite expensive. Um, but for these, just uh, feel free. We have a, a lot of them actually since the 2012. Uh, and later, later on, we're gonna get also bigger boards in case you want to uh, make like a bigger circuit board for your own projects. So yeah, just make sure that you you're using the single-sided one if you intend to make a single-sided board. Then, uh, so we can use double-sided tape in order to attach it to the surface of the machine bed. 
the way we do it is so with these boards it's easy because like the uh, basically the width of the of the tape it matches the, the width of the board oh yeah here take this knife so and cut the remaining part off Install it somewhere where you feel that it's flat. And then it's a good idea to use a, like a piece of cloth to make sure that it sticks pretty well on the surface. Like so. Um, and then we can move the tool a bit closer to where we actually want to set the origin. Um, and one thing is I'm going to move it up. So this is going to remind you about the, how you how you install the tool. So the, the one that we installed uh, a moment before is the 0.4 millimeter tool. So in order to release it, um, so before you release it, also make sure that you hold it with your two fingers. So it doesn't drop and doesn't break. Um, then, uh, so on one side there is no set screw, but you have to find the, the side where there is a set screw. So then you release the set screw, and you will feel that you can move the tool up and down. Uh, and initially, initially what you want to do, you want to move the tool a little bit in, so that it's higher. And then you set the set screw. And then you use the software in order to move it a little bit down. So as I told before, so for... Uh, so if you need to go bigger distances, then you can use the continuous move. But once you get closer um, to the origin, so I'm going to approximately move it to the origin, it should be, it's better that you switch to the one millimeter mode, so to the, uh, or to one millimeter or even smaller if necessary. So, and then we can adjust this the position quite precisely. And uh, at this point, it is important that, um, you also watch the distance between uh, the body, so this carriage, um, so this uh, spindle carriage and the actual spindle. Uh, so there's, so if you look carefully, so when I move it up, so this part, like the vertical part of the of the mechanism, it kind of moves up. And uh, as as far as you can also imagine, so if it moves too close to this um, to this frame over here. It's not going to have the possibility to move down anymore. So this is where, so this is one of the most uh, kind of often most popular mistakes uh, and, and problems that students usually have. So they do not understand why why the tool is jumping up suddenly and uh, misbehaving, and it is mostly because of uh, you know you didn't watch this distance before. So you need to have enough space so that the tool actually can still move down. Um. And while once you have it in this position, so now we we are hovering the place where we would like to set also the x and y. But um, in order to set the z, we need to again use our fingers to hold the tool, up. and then we release it, and we gently move it down to the level of the of the copper, so that, so that it touches the copper. I usually kind of twist it a little bit in so that it kind of eats into the copper a tiny bit and then I set the set screw and then in the interface uh, I hit the, the Z button over here it's gonna ask me whether I will I want to change the Z origin and I hit yes so now you see the Z value here on the left side of this controller interface is showing a zero so that's the Z zero and once I press uh, Z up Z plus it's going to move it up one millimeter, two millimeters, three. And before we set the X and Y, I can still adjust it in a, in a precise manner like this. So let's say that this is going to be, this is going to be the X and Y origin. And for that, I'm going to click this X, Y button. It's going to ask whether, where we want to change the X, Y origin. We want that. Um, and now we're ready to mill.
And before we do that, we close this. Uh, one thing. So, uh, so before you mill, uh, you want to make sure that the setup of the uh, of the control software is correct. So for milling PCBs, uh, if you're doing it with mods, if you're creating the, the tool paths with mods, then it is going to generate you RML1 code. If you're generating uh, paths with the other software and, and you specify NC code as output, then you will need to specify NC code. So there's also an, an automatic setting which uh, can detect that automatically. But I, so from experience, I do not trust it so much. So it's better for you to kind of figure out what, which one, which one, which of the formats you actually use. Uh, so in this case, we're going to use RML1 and we're going to use millimeters and hit OK. And then to cut, uh, you hit the cut button. It's not going to start to cut immediately. It's uh, because you need to specify what you want to cut. So there are going to be some previous jobs, uh, so you want to delete them. I'm going to add, go to desktop to our test folder, and select the line test PNG. So the interior is for the outline, and this is for the um, yeah for the for the traces. I don't know, so yeah, why it, why it thinks that it's a PDF file, but whatever, and. Yeah, once that done, that is done, you can hit output. It's gonna activate the spindle. And at first, just to be sure, you want to reduce the speed. So you want to make sure that it starts cutting correctly with, let's say, 20, 20% of the speed. And then if you see that it goes forward nicely, then you can gradually increase the speed until 100%. And now we wait. So yeah, the PCB milling, milling process is done. And uh, you can hit the view button. And the machine is going to move the spindle up and move your board forward like this. And uh, before opening the window, uh, make sure that it finishes the movement. Because once you will open the window, it's going to stop in the middle of the process. Once it's done, you can open it up. You can use this brush in order to clean it off. Or you can also use this uh, little vacuum machine. To get rid of dust in a more elegant way. Uh, and we are not going to remove it yet uh, because we want to also cut the outline around it. But uh, you can you know, get closer and see how it looks like. Um, so, and in order to do that, uh, we're gonna do, we're gonna change the tool. Uh, so in order to do that, uh, again, remember to hold the tool with, with your fingers, then release the set screw and remove the tool. And be very careful not to kind of hit it uh, against something accidentally. And immediately after use, it's, it's best practice to just put it back in the, in the container here so that it's protected. And even if it drops on the floor, so the, the actual tip of the tool is, is protected, it's sort of floating in the air. And then um, take the 0.8 one, so that's that's the one that we use for cutting. Uh, so sometimes when you're making like through hole boards and uh, you, you're working with thicker traces, then you can do all all the jobs, all the traces, and also uh, drills and, and cutting with one tool, with 0.8 for example. But for small, smaller components um, that we're going to use also today, uh, so we use two different tools. So 0.4 for cutting, and then this 0.8, no, 0.4 for milling the traces, and 0.8 for actually cutting the outline. So again, so you, you carefully hold it with your two fingers, and you insert it into the collet. And you move it in uh, as much as you can, but you Try not to go over the line where it starts to get tapered. So there's this, um, you know, the, yeah. the tapered edge which then moves into the 
tip of the tool, so you want to you know, stop moving it in uh, before that. Then you set the set screw. You go to continuous movement again and move to the location where it is hovering the material. Let's go down a little bit. And I'm going to switch over to 100 steps. You need to stay all of set all again. Yeah, you need to set the Z again. So after each tool change, uh, you need to set because um, because you you cannot be so precise yeah. with your hands. So yeah. it's better to. Why can be same. You see, we are as if uh, the, so the machine thinks that we are hovering above the material uh, uh, two millimeters. Like that we are two millimeters above the material, so the tip is, but it's actually not. So you see that there's more. There's one centimeter. Mm -hmm. So you have to move a little bit down again using the same method. So take care with, take a careful look here. So there should be enough space so that it can actually move down in order to cut through the material. Yeah. So you can go like this, and then once you're ready to set, uh, you again hold the tool with your two fingers. Release the set screw, move it down gently, make sure that it touches the surface nicely, and then you set the set screw into place. And now this should be the z zero, uh, and you see the Z here is showing uh, minus uh, 0 0.7, yeah, mi minus 0 0.71. You want it to be zero, so you hit the Z button over here, and now it's zero. Now we can move a few millimeters up. Uh, and we do not change the XY, so we leave the XY as for the traces uh, because we want to the design to match the traces. So we want to have the want to use the same coordinate system for the cuts as well. So we do not touch those. So now it is actually ready for cutting, and uh, we can hit. So first we're gonna reduce the speed a little bit to fifty percent, let's say. We hit cut, we delete all the previous uh, jobs that were there, and uh, we'll select the line test interior RML. Open, and then we hit output. You see it's spinning almost 9000 revolutions per minute. So the specification of this is that it's supposed to spin like 7,000 revolutions per minute, but somehow it goes faster, so which is good. And we see that it's cutting nicely, so we can go up to 100 with this one. And this one is going to be quite fast. Um, and okay, so now, now we're done milling, uh, so done cutting the outline. And what we need to do now is, again, we hit U, so that the tool is being moved up and uh, the actual part is being moved forward. It moves, we can open it up, and again we can use this little button here. So, and we can use the tools uh, that are hidden in this box next to it uh, in order to remove it. So this knife is especially useful, so you carefully try to you know, shake it out from the... And yeah, hold well, this is what you, what you get. Yeah, there. 